The savior of the world And now We can call him friend God sent his son He's the savior of the world And now We can call him friend Jesus Savior Jesus Son, he's the savior of the world, and now we can call him friend. God sent his son, he's the savior of the world, and now we can call him friend. Jesus. Hi kids and hello J12. How have you been? We're so glad that you could join us once again today. In behalf of our pastors, Pastor Carlo, Pastor Shaleen, and all of our teachers, welcome to Destiny Kids Church Online. My name is Teacher Diwa and I will be the one to teach you in today's lesson. If this is your first time to join us, please do comment the word first that's F-I-R-S-T in our comment section so that we can welcome you to Kids Church and plug you in into our groups, alright? And if this is your end time to join us, I would like to encourage you to share this video and tag your friends so that more and more people can learn about God, alright? Can I count on you on that? That's good. So why do we call our church Destiny again? Hmm, bakit nga ba Destiny ang pangalan ng church natin? Because we believe in that word, Destiny. It says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. It says there that God has a wonderful plan for each one of us. God has a plan for you, for me, and for everyone around us. And those plans are for our own good. They are not to harm us. God has a plan, a wonderful future for us. God has a destiny for us. And like we say in Kids Church, God's plan for our lives is always okay approved and the best let's say it one more time god's plan for my life is always okay approved and the best all right so that's why we call our church destiny so now in today's lesson we will continue our series entitled unwrapping christmas so who among you were able to join us for the past weeks in our series. Can I see a raise of hands? Good job if you haven't missed a lesson yet. So this is our fifth lesson in the Unwrapping Christmas series. 
But before we dive deeper into our lesson today, let's review first what we've talked about so far. So, so far we have learned about unwrapping hope. Can we say that together? Hope. So in that lesson, we learned that hope is a person and his name is Jesus. On the second week, we learned about unwrapping salvation. We learned that salvation is a free gift from God. And all we have to do is to receive it. On the third lesson, we learned about unwrapping joy. We learned there that we can be always joyful no matter what the circumstances in our lives are. Alright? And last week, Teacher Josh told us about unwrapping peace and reconciliation. We learned that God is the source of true peace. That apart from God, we cannot really have true peace. Alright? So this week, we will unwrap another lesson entitled, Unwrapping Love. Alright? But before we do that, let's take a look again at our memory verse for this series. Who still remembers our memory verse? What was that? It's in John chapter 3 verse 16. Before we recite it, can we read it again together? Let's go. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Alright, maybe some of you already memorized this verse even before our series. But for those who are not, let's do it with actions so that we can easily remember this very, very wonderful verse. Alright, so let's do it with actions. John chapter 3 verse 16. Let's go. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Did you get that? Let's do it one more time. And I hope we really memorize it because this is, you know what? This is our last lesson for this series. That's why it is important for us to really memorize this verse already. Alright? So let's do it again. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Alright, so good job everybody. We hope that more than memorizing, of course it is important for us to memorize that verse. We hope and we pray that we really understand that verse about um, John chapter 316 and about God's love for us. And you know, for us to understand more about God's love, that will be our lesson today. And let's take a look at this video so that we can learn more about it. Alright? Hi kids! Today's story is about God's love for us. Many years ago, when God created the world, He made everything good so that we could enjoy His creation. But something happened right after that. People disobeyed God and His instructions. They didn't want to do the right thing, so God got upset. After people sinned against God, He was willing to forgive them and gave them another chance. In fact, God loved them so much that He decided to do something very special. One day, God sent His one and only Son to the world. That's right, baby Jesus. But Jesus wasn't always a baby. When He grew up, He showed God's love to everyone around Him. Jesus was always ready to help others, heal them, feed them, teach them, and just spend time with them. Jesus also had friends. 
he spent a lot of time with them. Jesus helped them when they were sick or sad, and he also shared many meals and stories with them. Something very special about Jesus was his love for kids. Some people didn't want kids to bother him, but Jesus wasn't bothered at all. He loved playing with children, teaching them and praying for them. Can you imagine Jesus playing with you? Well, you know Jesus went back to heaven. He is waiting to see you and me one day. But before Jesus went to heaven, he had to do something in order to show us how much he loves us. One day, Jesus suffered on a cross, taking the suffering away from us. He wants us to join him in heaven one day. He died so that we can have eternal life. What a beautiful gift. We will get to see him one day. But for now, we must share this message with others and love everyone around us. The Bible says that we love because God loved us first. He loves us so much that he sent Jesus to save us. Jesus said that we must love God with all our hearts, strength, and minds, and also love our neighbors as ourselves. God is love, and now we can love God and love others. So, did you enjoy that video, Kids and J12? That's such a wonderful message about God and God's love for us, right? So, today, we will learn more about God's love. And you know what, Kids and J12? God's love is really difficult to understand. You know why? Because it even says in the Bible in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18, Paul says that we may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep the love of Christ is the love of Christ. So it says in that verse that God's love for us is really magnificent. It's really, really large. And it will take a lifetime and even eternity for us to fully understand God's love. But in this lesson, we will take a look at a few things that uh, we want you, kids in J12, to learn about God's love. So are you ready? Let's go. So the first thing that we can say about God's love or what is God's love first is that God's love is unconditional can we say that together unconditional great loving unconditionally means loving people even in tough times this means loving someone when they're not lovable when they are being rude or inconsiderate It also means loving our enemies. Who among you can do that, kids and J12? You can love your enemies na kahit may kaaway ka, kaya mo silang mahalin. Kaya nyo bang gawin yun? That's really hard, right? Unconditional love is hard work. Right, it is really hard. But no matter how hard it is, did you know that God is still willing to give His love to us? Even if we are unlovable, kids and J12, God was willing to love us despite that. He was willing to show us His love even if we are rude sometimes, even if we disobey Him sometimes. God's love is unconditional. As we saw in the video, Adam and Eve disobeyed God and sinned against God, separating them from Him. Sometimes we are like that, kids. We sin and disobey God, and we end up separated from Him. Do you do you want that? Do you want to be separated from God? Hmm. Me, I don't want to. But did you know that even if that happens, God still loves us? Even if we sometimes sin, if we disobey, even if we are far away from Him, uh, God still loves us because His love is unconditional. It is even mentioned in, the, in this verse, Romans 5, verse 8, But God demonstrates His own love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died.
for us. That's amazing, right, kids? Even if we were sinners, even if we were not even following God yet, Christ died for us already and He already showed His love for us because His love is unconditional. And the second thing that we can learn about God's love is that God's love is endless. Endless can also mean limitless, everlasting, eternal, or forever. So my forever. Like I mentioned earlier, God's love could have stopped the moment Adam and Eve fell. However, His love did not end towards them or towards us. Throughout the Bible, mankind has given hundreds of reasons for God to stop loving us. But he never does. This is because God's love truly endures forever or is endless. You know why? Because God's character, nature, and love will never change. As it is said in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If God doesn't change, you know His love won't change as well. So that's amazing, right, kids and J12? That no matter what we do, even if we give a reason to God for Him to stop loving us, He won't stop loving us because He is unchanging and His love is unchanging. That's why His love is endless. And we can know this also to be true because when a person places his faith in Jesus, that person is given eternal life in addition to forgiveness of sins. The fact that a person is receiving the gift of eternal life when we accept Jesus supports the truth that God's love does indeed endure forever. Because God's, God will not give eternal life to us if He is not even willing to give His endless love to us. Alright? It says in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3, And from far away, the Lord appeared to His people. He said, I love you, people with a love that will last forever. I became your friend because of my love and kindness. So God's love is forever. God's love is endless. And the last thing that we can say about God's love is, God's love is for you. That's right. You heard it right. God's love is for you. Our memory verse, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. The word world in that verse means everyone let's say it together everyone god did not only create the world but he loves those who are in it everyone god's love god loves everyone in the world meaning the love that god has shown through jesus is for you for me and for the people around us in the video we even saw how God has a special place in His heart for children like you. It was mentioned that Jesus loves kids. There's even a verse in the Bible which says how Jesus wants you to come to Him. In Luke chapter 18, verse 16, it says there, But Jesus called the children to Him and said, Let the children come to Me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. God loves you so much that He wants you to be with Him always. And you know what, kids in J12? God is calling you to Him. He is calling you. Come to me, my child, and I want to be with you. God wants to be with you. And so this Christmas here at Kids Church, we hope and we pray that all of us, you will open your hearts to God's love and receive Him. Let's allow Him to be with us always. Alright? 
If you want that, kids and J12, I would like to invite you in this short prayer of accepting Jesus into your life. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for my life. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you, Lord, for showing me your love. Lord, please forgive my sins. And starting today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Help me, Lord, to walk with you always and to be with you every single day. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So if you pray that prayer from your heart, that's one of the best decisions that you can make in your life. God is with you and God's love is flowing to you. Alright? So now that we know about God's love, very quickly, how do we show God's love this Christmas? So in Mark chapter 12 verse 30 to 31, it says there, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. So how do we show God's love this Christmas? Very, very simple. Just two things. First, love the Lord. Love the Lord with everything that you have. And second, love others the way you want to be loved. Alright, so did you get that, kids in J12? That is our lesson for today and we hope you learned something. Before we go and do our activities, let's just close in prayer once again. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this lesson. Thank you, God, for giving us Jesus and allowing him to die on the cross for us. Lord, thank you for un your unconditional love that even if we are unlovable, you still love us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your endless love that it never stops, Lord. Even if we stop loving you, Lord God, your love never stops, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, um, thank you for making your love personal to us that uh, this Christmas we can truly experience it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his love and grace for our lives, Lord. And we just want to say that we love you too. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So for our kids, let's do this artwork. That's it for today. We hope you truly learned something and you learned more about God's love. I would like to remind everyone that this is the last online lesson for the year. And we hope and we would like to invite everyone to join us next week on site in our physical service. Because there, we will be having our Thanksgiving service. So we hope to see you at Robinson's Galleria next week. Alright? We hope to see you there. And for our online attendees, see you next year. Goodbye, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year.